Welcome back, and thank you for just, if you just joined us. We're talking to uh, two junior officers with the United States Navy. The topic tonight is the Navy's recruitment effort, dealing primarily with minorities uh, and efforts to try to increase the number of minorities in the Navy. Uh, and, of course, we're talking to Lieutenant Barnes and Lieutenant Guten. And let me yes, welcome sir. both of you to uh, the show comments. Pleasure. Good to be here. Uh, earlier, we spoke to Commander Williams, uh, Lieutenant uh, Barnes, about the opportunities for minorities in the U.S. Navy. And I'd like to sort of continue that conversation with both you and uh, Lieutenant Guten, recognizing that both of you sort of represent uh, two different kinds of institutions and two ways of becoming involved in uh, the officer's part of the U.S. Navy. Why don't you give us some information in reference to uh, what you do and uh, some of the things that you're involved in? Okay. Uh, my particular commissioning source happened to be the U.S. Naval Academy. Uh, the Naval Academy is a very uh, competitive way of coming into the Navy because uh, probably 15,000 applicants yearly apply for the Naval Academy and only about 1,300 actually gain access into it. It's uh, quite a lengthy process, but uh, you're pretty much creaming the crop when you come in that way. Well, what is the process of becoming involved in uh, the Navy from that angle? Okay, application process should begin around your junior year in high school, and uh, as a combination of your SAT score, transcripts, and all your ac extracurricular activities at, at school are taken into effect. In addition, you need to request nomination from your senator, your congressman, or if you are the dependent of a retired military member, you can request nomination from the vice president and the president of the United States. Uh, upon which time your application goes in to the selection board and you are selected and see coming up real soon here in July, the class, uh, the newest selected class will begin the U.S. Naval Academy. So if a person is interested in becoming involved in the Navy from that particular point of view, he or she ought to start movement uh, by now? By now, if you are uh, if you are completing your junior year, it's a very simple call or a letter letter to the uh, candidate guidance office, the U.S. Naval Academy. They have a toll free number, and uh, that actually gets you a pre candidate questionnaire. And the uh, first step is taken at that point. Very good. Now let's move on to uh, Lieutenant Guten. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Guten, you came into the U.S. Navy in a different. Uh, direction from uh, that of uh, Lieutenant Barnes, did you not? Yes, sir, that's correct. My commissioning source was through Aviation Officer Candidate School. Uh, the basic requirements there to, uh, to get accepted, uh, first of all, you have to have a, a college degree, a bachelor's degree, at least. Um, after that, there's an application process. Uh, there's a test, an officer candidate test. Uh, after that, your, your application is put together, sent to Washington, D.C., and a selection board uh, selects you for the programs. Okay, uh, both of you, I think, uh, represent uh, uh, something that is quite unusual in terms of the military today. Uh, first of all, uh, not only are you junior officers, but you're also aviators, uh, is that correct? No, That's so correct. How did uh, the two of you, uh, and perhaps maybe if you could say something about uh, the, the glamorous, perhaps, part <laughs> of uh, the Navy, that you might be able to encourage uh, more youngsters to become interested. How did you become involved in that aspect of the uh, Navy, uh, Lieutenant Barnes? Well, upon completing the U.S. Naval Academy, every graduate will go into the Navy for a minimum of uh, five years as a Naval officer. Around about the February of your senior year becomes service selection night, at which time you choose of which service selection uh, you want to go into. Service selections primarily being the Naval Academy you're limited to what we call uh, unrestricted line officer, which is uh, an aviator, a ship driver, or a submariner. Those are the three ways that we're going to go. Um, I was able to obtain uh, uh, selection as a naval flight officer, and I went to Pensacola to flight school and uh, flying in the P-3 Orion aircraft. It's, uh, that is the glamorous part of the Navy, in my opinion. Very good. Now, uh, uh, Lieutenant Burns, you've also uh, the flight experience. Why don't you yes, give sir. us some information relative to your experience? Okay, basically, sir, uh, when it started, my first application to the uh, Navy, uh, to officer candidate school, uh, I applied for aviation, got accepted. You had to have phys physical qualifications uh, uh, along with some uh, academic qualifications. After the application was selected, I got picked up for the officer candidate school. My flight experience has been down in Pensacola, uh, Florida, 
where the Aviation Officer Candidate School is. I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, the movie Officer and a Gentleman, but it's that type of school. Um, upon successfully completing that, you go to your primary flight school, which, is, which I went to, Corpus Christi, Texas. That's where you, uh, you get your first uh, time in uh, naval aircraft, and your, your, your experiences start from there. After uh, receiving uh, the coveted wings of gold, uh, I guess it's about a two-year process, then you go up to what we call Fleet Readiness Squadron. That's when you train to uh, do the missions and operations that the Navy have you to do out uh, on the real, in the real world, as on the ocean and in foreign countries. Very good. Now, uh, both of you uh, undoubtedly represent uh, the best in terms of opportunities that are available in the Navy. Now, uh, what are some of the other opportunities that are available that uh, you could use as an example to encourage more people to become involved in the Navy? I mean, what, what is the pitch, uh, for, for, for example, uh, Lieutenant Burns, that you use in your area, your regional area, when you try to encourage minorities and females to become involved in uh, the U.S. Navy? Well, I'd, I'd like to, the message I'd try to get across is that the Navy is a viable career opportunity for minorities and females. Traditionally, it's not looked on as being such because we have so few minority role models to aspire to. That is really the strongest point that we provide in the recruitment process is to go out and show uh, Southeastern United States, in my case, that there are minorities in the Navy that are doing well, that are happy and successful at it. I, I had never been further than 250 miles away from the spot I was born in prior to joining the Navy. I'm originally from Savannah, Georgia. In the meantime, since the Navy, I've been, 200, I've been to uh, three quarters of the way around the world, uh, all through Europe and Hawaii on the other side. I've gotten exposure to discuss the world politics and uh, uh, major points with uh, all of Europeans on the beaches of Tormolino, Spain, Marbella, through uh, Germany, etc. I have grown and I've given something back to the Navy for giving me the opportunity that it gave me by uh, educating me through the Naval Academy. So in a real sense, you can say that you can, what, join the Navy and, uh, and see really the see world. the world. That's, uh, that's the truth. Very good. And let us take a, a, a break here, uh, Lieutenant Gooden, and after which we'll come back and we'll talk about some of your experiences. Uh, we'll be back with you following this commercial break. <laughs> 